the alumni and the students. So this game should be very, I need to this. this game should be very interesting. Up next is Gerald and Travis. So stay tuned. And be tuned and be in tune for your comments. Tackle for a loss. It'll be second and 15 for the Pirates. Like you said, Pirates won the last two games. Big game here today with what is homecoming for Hampton University. Well, that's the game you definitely always want to win. You want to make sure the fans have an enjoyable experience and um, you get a chance to celebrate the big win on a day where you got all the fans and family and, and alumni back. So I'm sure the, the, the Pirates are looking to come out here and set the tone early. Their offense has been playing pretty well. Uh, the receivers, Barney and uh, Bell, have really been the, the pace setters for the offense. Again, along with, I agree with you. I think Bell, Ronald Bell is going to be one of the big players in the game. But good, big playmaker. I think a good run here from the Pirates. And it was third down, long run. That was number 25. On the carry. Yeah, William Robinson has also been a big spark for this Pirate offense here these past few games as he's kind of stepped into the role as the lead back for the Pirates. First down for the Pirates on their opponent's 30-yard line. What is the opening shot for the head the Pirates? And they're trying to go quick. Uh, apparently they see something. They don't want to give them a chance to get set up, and they feel like they have something they can take advantage of from Lynchburg. Pass is caught. And ball all the way down to the five-yard line. Byron. And right on cue, Byron Barney gets right into the game. Um, left wide open, makes a big catch. Now it's first and goal at the seven-yard line. And Pirates looking to punch it in here. Again, good tempo by the Hampton Pirates. Short screen over. And touchdown. Two quick throws there by Williams. And that will be a touchdown for the Hampton Pirates. Quick 6-0 lead for the Pirates. And that was with just, what, a two-minute drive? Two men. And I'll say Delman Williams, again, he's been playing some uh, fantastic football here these past few weeks. Um, ever since they came back from Northern Iowa, it's like the, the light switch went on for him. And he's been um, leading this offense, spearheading this offense. And they've been playing some great football. And, again, that was good. Awareness there by Williams getting to the line quick. Know exactly where you want to go with the ball, making quick decisions. And a quick six points there for the Hampton Pirates. Big old attempt is up and good. 7-0 is the lead here on ESPN+. Plus. Hampton Pirates take advantage of the uh, early early drive, and we'll be right back here on ESPN+. Plus. Back here at ESPN Plus with your Big South coverage. Happy University versus 
University of Lynchburg. 7-0 lead for the Hampton Pirates, 13-22. Left here in the first quarter. What was a quick five-play drive here for the Pirates? Uh, yeah, and, and Lynchburg's going to look here to try to respond. Uh, they have some pretty good weapons on offense themselves. They have a couple of receivers that are going to be some people to look out for in Javon Green and Johnny Rembert, who, uh, who's shown that they can make some plays throughout the year. So I'm sure the Pirates are going to be aware of that and really try to take those guys out of the game to kind of keep this momentum and keep this tone going. Bad kick there by the hand. The Pirates went with a swift kick, but goes straight out of bounds. So Lynchburg will start their drive on the 35-yard line. And I'm sure Hampton probably chose to squib it there. There is a strong wind out there in the stadium. You, you can feel it as you walk the field um, that's blowing across the field. So I'm sure knowing that, that probably felt like that was the safest move to just go ahead and put it on the ground and um, not give up the short kick or a big return. Yeah, forecast today will be around 55. There is a short, short, small chance of rain here today. Wind is about at 15 miles per hour, so it's a little windy out there for the kickers. Drop back and shotgun, short pass is completed and tackled. There on the tackle was number 98, 94, excuse me. And it'll be just a two yard, excuse me, one yard gain. Green on the and that was Devontae Sproul there, red the crossing route, uh, made a big tackle on the play for a minimum gain. Um, and this is, if you're Lynchburg, you definitely want to stay out of these situations, these second and long situations. Back in. It looks to be a shotgun here for Lynchburg once again. Go with what looks like to be an RPO option. Carry there for again another minimal game. Good stand there by the Hampton Pirates defensive line, not letting the uh, offensive line get a push there. And that was Devontae Sproul again on the outside. Just kind of sitting out there waiting on him to set the edge and really gave the running back no place to go. Um, and, and was able to actually get that yard back that they gained. Um, and here we are on third down, uh, third and long. I'm sure the Pirates probably going to look to get out to the quarterback here. Shotgun once against Lisburg. Pirates gets to the backfield, forces a bad pass and incomplete. And again, there's that pressure, and um, that's a name you might a name you might want to get used to in this game. Is Capri Desaid? He's um, right now, he gets out to the passer, I think, better than anybody on the Pirates defense right now. And he has a, a relentless motor. In our last game we had him, he uh, really, really played a big part in the win over uh, the Dragons of, excuse me, the Dragons of, of Lane College. Excuse me. Uh, and then we got a block punt there as the Pirates look to scoop it up. And, and again, that was a nice, good push by the line. That's about a good four Pirates back there for the block. It was an easy, easy conversion for the Pirates. So a block, punt, and touchdown by the Hampton Pirates. Now a 13-0 lead with just, what, four minutes into the football game. And that was Thompson there with the block and the recovery on the, on the punt. Uh, but like you said, there were a host of Pirates who had an opportunity to get out there and block that kick. Uh, but great awareness to be able to not just fall on the ball, but pick it up and run it in for a score. That's good confidence by Bruton, head coach. He definitely brought the pressure there. Believe this team can get back there instead of dropping back, trying to get a good return. He said, let's go for the block punt, and they get it right there. So we're set for the field goal. Field goal is up, and it is <laughs> blocked and no good. So the score will remain at 13 nothing. 11.55 remaining here in the fourth, first quarter. Here on ESPN Plus, a big South coverage. We'll be right back. We'll stay with it. Again, it's been a quick, quick turn of events here in this game. Just four minutes. Pirates up 13 0. Had a quick, what, five play drive to start off the game. Defense came out there and responded the same way the offense did with intensity and got a block punt there. So that's another touchdown. One touchdown for the defense, one touchdown for the offense. And for the Pirates, you're looking at it, you're saying, we got to find a way to keep this going. And the game, like, as a game starts to go this way, it's easy to kind of start letting up and kind of playing laxed and and not mentally being engaged in the game so let's look for the coaches to try to keep that intensity in those guys and and finish the job where 
Lynchburg is going to definitely be looking to possibly take advantage of that if it happens. And like we said, it is a little windy out here. Ball files off the tee, and then set up again for the kick. Yeah, and this stadium does a uh, does a job of trapping the air, trapping this wind in here. Um, you can walk outside the stadium and you not feel the wind, but the moment you come in here, you can feel it swirl around. Here we go, set to kick off. Little well, Max with the kick, and this time he's going to go for the big kick. And it gets to about the seven-yard line, and it will be returned. And straight down the middle, and a nice tackle there by the Pirates. That will be number 61. That's Cameron Walker there with the tackle. As a special teamer, those are the plays you look for as you come down and get a chance to get those big hits and those They'll hear those woos from the crowd. That was a great job by the kick, the coverage team, um, as they were able to keep the uh, the Dragons inside the 25 and give them that long field to have to cover to try to get some points here. So the Lynchburg Dragons will start their drive off on the 22-yard line. And now, um, given the pressure the Pirates probably got on the last drive, they brought in two running backs and maybe to help with some of the the protections to give the quarterback a chance. Hand off to the running back. And it looks like it will be no gain here on the play. Good push there by the defensive line of the Hampton Pirates. And Darion Carr coming from his uh, corner position or his safety position coming down to make the um, tackle there or push the runner out of bounds with a nice hit on the, on the ball carrier. Stevenson back in shotgun once again. Player in motion, play action, pass is overthrown, intended to number 82. Sadai, pass was a little too much on it, sails right over the receiver, and it nearly could have been uh, picked off for interception. So now we have third down here, third and 10 for the Lynchburg Dragons. Well, part of the problem there is uh, quarterback he's going to have some trouble he's not the the biggest of guys so he's going to have a little trouble seeing over those big offensive linemen and those defensive linemen coming to get him so i'll look for lynchburg to see if they start trying to move him around in the pocket with some half rolls and some sprint outs and some bootleg stuff to try to give him a easier time and some find some windows to throw through and again the hampton pirates get to the backfield of lynchburg and big hit there by cameron walker Cameron Walker's making himself known today. He, he just was the guy that ran down with the big hit on the kickoff. And um, I think Cameron might need to sign up for WWE as he uh, oh, suplexed the quarterback into the ground. And it looks like the Lynchburg was not too pro happy with the way the quarterback went down. So, again, another three and out here for the Lynchburg Dragons as they're set up to punt. This time with heavy protection. And the Pirates nearly get back there again. Short kick goes to about the 45, and it's not fair caught, but instantly tackled. So the Hampton Pass will start their drive off with a good field position. Well, we, do have, 47. we do have a flag on the field. It's a flag on the field. Looks like roughing the kicker. So that's not what you want if you're the Hampton Pirates. And we'll just, we'll have a timeout here. It'll stay Lynchburg's uh, football. Only at Hardy's. Real honey. Back here on ESPN Plus of coverage of the Big South football. Had the price up 13 0. And what was a three and out for Lynchburg? Turns into a, I guess, an extra chance here on this drive. Roughening the punter there was called on the Pirates 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. So Lynchburg will continue their drive here. Ball is at the about the 29-yard line shotgun formation here. And it'll be a quarterback run. And he makes a couple of nice moves and gains about six yards there. That was Charming Stevenson on the run. And this is uh Lynchburg. This is where you want to be. Gained about seven yards on that first play. Now it's second and short, and now you can kind of open up your playbook um, and do a lot of different things here offensively. You've seen a lot of run pass options here for them. Quick passes like this one, screen play and goes for about two yards close to a first down. And it will be a first down here for the Lynchburg Dragons. 
And for and for Lynchburg, that's a good sign there. You get your first first down. You kind of get that out of the way now. You find a little uh, a rhythm here offensively. Um, so now let's see if they can keep that momentum going um, to keep this drive alive. Guys are like us bringing pressure, but drop back into coverage. And it looks to be good coverage. Lynchburg Dragons find a hole in a good pass and catch there for about 25 yards there, all the way back down to the Pirates. 33. Rembert on the reception. Rembert's on the reception. Again, Johnny Rembert was one of those those people we talked about on the last drive that he, the wide receiver position for uh, Lynchburg is one that's actually pretty good and been productive for them this year. Um, so he's somebody to keep an eye on. He was able to find a soft spot in that coverage and sit down and make a big play. And now Lynchburg's looking at a possible possible score here on this drive. Yeah, Steve is one of Stevens' favorite target, Rembrandt, which is the leading touchdown receiver here for the Lynchburg Dragons. It was a run. Play goes for about three yards. And was again another tackle there for Devontae Spurrow. You see he's all over the field today. Yeah, he looks like he wants to have a happy homecoming. <laughs> uh, but he's one of those key defensive players for the Pirate. He, you need him to be successful in order to have a good day defensively. Another screen play when it goes to another pass. Trick play works here for Lynchburg, and there's no flag on the field. <laughs> that is a touchdown. Look what it was, a screen play turned into another toss, and I don't know if that was. And I think the refs are going to talk about it here because it looked like an illegal forward yeah. pass. Yeah, and the flags do drop, so this looks to be coming back. And I'm sure, I'm sure uh, they're going to look at the replay just to confirm what the referees saw, but I saw it as well and wondered why I didn't see the flag. Yeah, so what I think they're going to come together and talk about it to see if it actually was a four pass. And from here, from the booth, it definitely looked like it was a four pass, four screen pass. Then the receiver didn't have anything there and just started to throw it out. Yeah, the, it, I, I would chalk that one up to poor execution by the offense. I think the design was the screen pass after they had success on the first one and come back with that same look and give them a chance to throw it. Um, I just think the receiver either A, ran the, shot, the route too shallow, or B, the quarterback put it in the wrong spot when he dropped back too far. But I absolutely agree. I think that was always part of the plan, but just bad execution there by the Dragons. Absolutely, if the pass was lateral, it would have been completely legal, but because the refs do believe that the pass went forward, that's why the flags was dropped. And they're doing the right thing here. I think they uphold the call of a touchdown, and then you go back, they have their conversation, but you go back and you look at replay play to confirm whether what you saw. Absolutely, you let the play, uh, play out itself. So and then you can exactly like you said you can change from there. So this was a great job, I think, by this crew of what they're doing. And make you want to make sure you get the call right. You don't want to uh, blow this one because it points on the board. So Lynchburg is hoping that when they look at the review, they'll uphold the call and it'll be a touchdown. Of course, if you're a pirate, you're looking at it and you're saying, "Hey, uh, that was a, that was a penalty. Let's call it back." Yeah. Again, this is the same job that the Pirates had for once completely stopped the Dragons, but. An unnecessary penalty on roughing the punter extended the draft. Yeah. Yeah, so they called it was, they did drop the flag and it wasn't a legal forward pass. So they'll bring it back and it'll actually be a 10 yard penalty on Lynchburg and a loss of a down. So it'll be third down and 20 here for Lynchburg. And it was a big turn of events. They went from a touchdown to a third and 20 at their own, at their opponent's 45. And and if you're Lynchburg, it hurts even more because not only do you get the points taken off the board, but a play you kind of set up to run, you've now shown it and... Can't really you, come back you, to you, it. Yeah, you've kind of wasted that play. So it like the Pirates drop back in the deep zone. will be a short pass down over the middle. A couple of good moves made, but he will be well short of the first down. Gain about 13 on the toss it will be fourth and seven here for the Lynchburg Dragons they're keeping their offense on the field and they're thinking about going for it yeah and that hit Darion Carr just put on that receiver was one that <laughs> makes defensive, defensive players get a little excited but there's a big fourth down right here I think with the win um, Lynchburg and the length of this kick they feel like their kicker probably doesn't have the ability to make it so um, they're going to give their offense a chance and play and worst case scenario it's a so actually, field position. So actually, the Lynchburg is going to think about it here and take a timeout. 
It'll be just 30 second timeout, so we will stay here on the field with you. And what is fourth and seven here for Lynchburg? Just halfway through the first quarter, 7.45 left. Pirates leave 13-0. It would have been a very eventful game so far. And, and if you're Lynchburg, you're looking at the game and you're at this situation right here like this is a big play or a big, this could be a big uh, momentum builder for the drive and for the game. Knowing that if you get this first down, you keep the drive alive, you give yourself a chance for points. Um, but also, you look at this drive and you feel like you, you've had some success. You can move the ball against the Pirates defense. You just got to go out here and execute. And with this play call, this shows a confidence in your offense or a lack of confidence in your defense against this Pirates right now. I think it's a little. I think uh, it's a little bit of both for for Lynchburg. They've had they're showing some confidence that they can execute the play and and get it done, which we see they don't. But you trust your defense to go out there. You're trying to trust your defense to go out there and stop them if you don't. Yeah. So Lynchburg decided to go with another short screen there, but the pass is all over. It if he would have completed it, but the pass ends up being incomplete. So it'll be turnover on downs. Half the pass would take over the ball on their own 33 yard line. And the Pirates defense, um, again, the, the, for them, it's the, the penalty on the kick on the special teams. But you got to get off the field. You can't give teams chances to, to get points. You know, they caught a break on the legal forward pass. But Lynchburg did a lot of good things on that drive to get themselves a chance. Yeah, I um, totally agree with that. I think Lynchburg uh, shown to be way more comfortable as the drive progressed. Handoff here for the Pirates. A couple of moves made and tackle is made. Big hit, there'll be a gain of about not even a yard, so we go right back to the line of scrimmage. Still be second and 10 for the Pirates. That was Robinson with the carry. And the Pirates, I can see them trying to get William Robinson um, some touches here. He's a big part of the offense. And he was right on it. Another play designed for Will Robinson. The screen play straight to him. He gains about a good four yards here. So it'll be third and six for the Pirates. And this is where the confidence, I think, what we, you asked about earlier, confidence in the defense or the offense. They feel good about their defense because this is a pretty good stop right now. They got them in third and long. Um, if they can get a stop, they get off the field. And a good hard count there by the Hampton Pirates, but does not get the flag. Deep play. He feel like he had a play to throw a 50-50 ball, but he, I think he's realized he didn't get the offside uh, flag. And we'll get a completed pass here by the Pirates. You couldn't really say who came down with the football. Both the cornerback and the receiver went up for it. But the ref called it a complete pass on for the Pirates. That was Barnes with the reception. And that was a that was a one I was kind of questioning myself because the defensive back ended up being in good position. But Barnes just came and took the ball away. And the screenplay starts to incomplete. What I think what happened there was Will, well, Williams said they did a good hard count and got the edge offside so I think he had a free play there so he took a chance on a 50-50 ball but he really didn't get the flag so it was a dangerous play could have came off intercepted but ball was completed for a big game yeah that was a good job of the receiver protecting the quarterback there um, and now Bonds with the great catch in coverage with what makes the the drop on the, the routine catch and a big hit by the dragon defense to all the jar the ball loose and that was just a great, great play. Great play there by Lynchburg defense. They read that play all the way through. Second down. And here again, they have the, the Pirates in the third and long with an opportunity to get a stop and hold them to at least a field goal attempt. Looking like the Pirates are going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation, three receivers out. And he goes with the long receiver in the corner. Pass is completed, but he's out of bounds. But two flags are thrown on the field and what looks to be a, a pass interference against the defense. And that was a, a, a good, a good but late read by uh, Williams. He, that was the backside. I don't think that was his first read in the play. He looked front side to... Um, to Barney and that group of receivers over there didn't have anything. And 
Pass against pass friends will go against number 18 cornerback Hopper of Lynchburg. Pirates will get the ball all the way up to their opponent's seven yard line and with his first and goal. Yeah, but he came back to Dana um, and he just came back late. So he tried to force it in there. Defensive back never got a chance to see it. So it ended up drawing the flag. But and Dana actually still came down with the ball. Hand off. Goes for no gain there. Yeah, they seem like they've made up their mind that they're not going to let Real Robinson beat them today. So um, they're rallying around there. But I think the quarterback could have made a better read. He should have pulled that when he saw that that defender chasing uh, Robinson down. I absolutely agree with, agree with you. I feel like Lynchburg defense is going to force Williams to make the plays here. Definitely following Robinson, whether he has the ball or doesn't. We have a whistle on the field here. We have a, the officials call a timeout. Maybe it's something they see with one of the players that they call him to him. Uh, maybe the, uh, he was hurt or uniform, his equipment wasn't proper or something like that. I think he hit it right on there. I think it was a uniform issue. So they'll swap players here. And the Pirates second and goal looking to get some more points in. Add to this deficit for the Dragons. Five minutes left here in the quarter. Handoff. Pull right back out by Williams. He has the edge and he gets in, squeeze in, touchdown for Delmond Williams on the quarterback keeper. Again, a great, that was a great rebound. He read that defensive end, shoulders turned to chase the running back and was able to get the edge and with a stiff arm, keep the defender off of him and uh, find that corner of the end zone. Everything going to happen Pirates away. 19 nothing now is the lead as they line up for a field goal chance. One for two so far today. Second attempt was blocked. So no gimme here's the Pirates line up to make it 20. And I'm sure they probably talked to him about the protection because there was a lot of leakage through that um, line on that last, on that block PAT. And this time the field goal is up and good. 20 nothing is the lead. Hampton Pirates leading all over University of Lynchburg. We'll be right back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South Football. Back here on ESPN coverage of Big South Football, Hampton University up 20 to nothing on University of Lynchburg. And I feel like, tell me if I'm wrong, Hampton University is pretty much dominated on every aspect of this game, offense, defense, and special teams. So as we are we what midway here through the first quarter. They have definitely uh, had their way so far with um, Lynchburg. But the one bright spot for Lynchburg is they have had some success on that last drive after the penalty. Hampton had the three and out, and they got a second chance on the rough and the kicker. And they were able to move the ball, and they did score in spite of, you know, they had the penalty that called it back. So you have some confidence if you Lynchburg. Now you just got to go out there and try to make it happen. And I'm sure Hampton's going to want to remind them that um, they can, they're can they dominating this game. So, Hampton University goes back with the scoop kick. And a pretty successful scoop kick it was. Goes about to the 32-yard line. Receiver gets it and gets contacted instantly. So, Lynchburg will start that draft on their own 32. As Lynchburg offense comes back on the field, had a pretty good drive last time. Unfortunately, was stopped after going for it on fourth down on an incomplete screen pass. And that's what you're looking to build on if you're if you're um, the Dragons. You want to build on the success you had. Uh, if I when you got the players over to the sideline, you reminded them that hey, we moved the ball, we did some good things. We just got to stop with the the plays that hurt us. So lined up here, Pirates start off the game bringing a lot of pressure, but it's dropped back in coverage more and more as the game progresses. We'll see if they come back and bring a little bit more pressure here. Delay game here on Lynchburg. Not. Not, 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 not really want to start off a drive, not a play in between, literally straight from the kickoff, get a delay a game. But that's the that's the, what we were just talking about with those penalty, those things that that you're doing the self-inflicted wounds. You know, you already have to go against a pretty tough Hampton defense, but to make these plays yourself um, is what really hurts. Put themselves in their own five-yard deficit. Is they'll take about three more three yards back from the Pirates. 
Brings up second and 12. And I don't know what's gotten into Darion Carr, but he is coming downhill and really uh, making some plays defensively in the run game. And it seems like we have an injured player here on the field. It looks to be a player from the University of Lynchburg. And it's looking like that's um, Tomas Newman. Um, he was the ball carrier on that last play. Um, and I'm not sure what happened in that big pile up, but after that hit from um, Carr, uh, he might have got rolled up on, or he maybe got rolled back. His guys were falling at his legs and got tangled up in somewhere. But you hope the young man's okay. He's able to walk off and uh, return to the ball game. Newman is up, and he is limping towards the sideline. Newman is University of Lynchburg's leading rusher coming into this matchup with 337 yards on the season with 91 attempts, averaging three yards per carry. You say he was able to walk off with a little bit of a limp, so hopefully for the Dragons, the injury's not too serious and he'll be able to return, maybe get a new tape job after they look at him and make sure it's not too bad, but he'll be able to return and, uh, and help out. So back on the field is the offense, shotgun formation. They're looking to throw here. Pirates came with the pressure. Good wills there by Stevenson, and he gets out of bounds, escaping the pressure. He gets just back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's doing he's he's doing a good job in there, standing alive and trying to give him a chance because the Pirates are, and for the Pirates they're happy because you they're able to get the pressure without having to bring any blitzes or linebackers in, so they can just play coverage behind them. And he's, he has some wheels on him, so I, I know the Pirates are aware if he gets in space, he can make some plays with his legs. Newman, back and shotgun. Pirates came with the pressure. And I think a holding call with the flag on the backfield. And the pass is intercepted by the Hampton Pirates. That was a little scary, though, because they almost didn't get the interception because Carr, Carr wanted the ball. Yeah, yeah, two Pirates there fighting for the football. <laughs> yeah, it was a but, pretty inaccurate throw there. Yeah. By Stevenson. Yeah, but Carr wanted the ball and Chisley wanted it. So they both were kind of fighting over it. And fortunately, one, Chisley did come away with the interception um, to get the Pirates off the field. Yeah, so there was a holding call on the field. Had the Pirates had decided to decline and go with the outcome of the play, which was an interception. So the Pirates would take over on their opponent's four, or their own, excuse me, 42 yard line. And I will say for the Pirates so far this year, this has probably been their best. Um, showing to start the game. And the Pirates come back with a trick player of their own. So you see Lynchburg tried the screen <laughs> for the pass and Pirates got bit with it, but a flag got them uh, off the hook. Had the Pirates use the same play against them, but this time no flag on the field, so it works out for the Pirates. And the Pirates coaches say, we're going to show you how this play should look. <laughs> and pretty good execution. I know the receiver um, is a little upset. Uh, Antonio Graham might have been a little upset because he was open if it was a better pass as a touchdown. And we have a flag on the field. Williams tried to go for the touchdown there and had a man, but looked like that was number 88, Marcel. Marcel Paul on the, on the, on the uh, pass in the field, or he was the one that was passing the field with. Um, defensive back was there. Um, they just got to get those heads around. When you get the head around, you look for the ball, you tend not to get that call. Well, we have two penalties on the flag, on the field, excuse me. So actually, it was holding against the Pirates with the pass interference in the end zone. Those penalties were both offset in the replay, first down. And you see here today, it looks like the Pirates feel like they have some... Um, they have some matchup advantages on the outside because they've been taking some shots vertically um, with those receivers outside. As well, Easton on the run. And they're starting to be a little bit of chippiness down there um, as Antonio Graham was kind of getting into a little mix-up with, uh, with Marvin Grunchy from um, the Dragons as he was, they were blocking and engaged, so... Um, that might be something to keep an eye on. As games happen like this, they start to get out of hand. That can become a little chippiness and take away from um, a good game for both teams. Some pressure back on the quarterback. Big hit. Pass sells over the receiver. And 
and that was Willie Holloway, the defensive lineman from the Dragons from um, Lynchburg, able to get a little pressure on Delman right as he released the ball and, and caused an errant throw by uh, Delman Williams. So now third and 11 here for the Pirates on their opponent's 22 yard line. And I will look again. Um, Pirates have gone with a full vertical concept here in these situations and go trying to exploit that cover three defense they're seeing from Lynchburg. Is Lynchburg look like they check out of the coverage? They look like it's going to bring a blitz from the safety. Pirates read it out and they drop back into the coverage. <laughs> Williams will take it himself and try to get the first down, and he does. Looks like he's going to be just a little bit short, maybe a yard short of the. Well, excuse me. Of the uh, first down. Or maybe it uh, looks like, yeah, a little bit over a yard. That's a long yard that it had to make for a first down. So the Pirates with a decision to make here. It looks like they've made it already. Quick snap here by the Pirates. Look one side, goes to the other. But the Dragons read that play out all the way. And they stopped the fourth down attempt. And would take over on downs. Good defense there by the Lynchburg Dragons. On the reception. And that was Kevin Simon Simmons. And they read the screen pass to Barney and was able to uh, push through the block um, of Marcel Paul and make a great play. Uh, so, again, Lynchburg, they're, they're showing some signs and making some plays because I think that was a drive there. If the happening scores, you kind of put the start putting the nails in the coffin of Lynchburg. Uh, but making those stops in those situations continue to give you confidence and get, make you feel like you got a chance. As they'll take over the ball here with a minute 57 left to go in the first quarter. You know, bad execution there by the Dragons. Stevenson had a receiver in motion there on the run, but as soon as they snapped it, the receiver was in front of the football. His over shoulder pass, it was nearly a fumble there. Yeah, it looked like it should have been a direct snap to the receiver, but the timing of it kind of happened a little off and uh, caused the, the fumble. So another, in, like you said, inflicted wounds caused by their own uh, mishaps. Turns into second and 13. Short pass caught and big hit. Darion Carr again on the, on the big hit as the receiver was trying to get to the first down, but that was a good job by Stevenson uh, of trying to buy some time and find that crossing route. Um, getting the ball out to his receiver. And now you have third and short uh, with an opportunity to pick up a first down and keep this drive alive. 31 for the Lynchburg Dragons. Stevenson gets it, hands it off. And they'll run it. And they'll get the first down and more. Big gap. 40, 35, 30. All the way down to the 20. Nothing but green guys, and will be touchdown for the Dragons. Big run there on third and one by the Lynchburg Dragons. And almost a poor decision there. Great run. Great run by the uh, Tomas Newman, but almost a, a bad mistake. I guess he was slowing down to just walk into the end zone as the Pirates were giving chase. Uh, but again, like I said before, those the, when you don't convert those plays and you don't finish drives, you give teams hope, you give them opportunity. And here Lynchburg able to break off a long run on third and, and one. And now they have a little confidence that they can go out here and, and they can play with the Pirates. Field goal was up, then good. 20 to seven is the score. 35 seconds left here in the quarter. And it was a big run there by Newman. Looking like the Pirates had stocked the box. They're trying to make sure they don't get the first down. As soon as he got to that uh, secondary of the defense, it was pretty much over. It was nothing but green gas there for Newman as he outran the D-backs. Yeah, just poor tackling on that. And, and when you when you kind of bring your guys up and you try to stuff the run and you load the box, that's the, the thing that can happen if you don't make those tackles, if you miss tackles. Uh, there's nobody in the secondary. That safety isn't back there to, to give you a chance to slow the run down and get him on the ground. Uh, once he gets through that first level of defenders, like you said, there's green grass in front of him and it's... Uh, it's a race to the pylon like we saw there. Set for kickoff, 35 seconds here left here in the first quarter. It's been a very eventful first quarter. And now we'll see how this win affects the kickoff here. 
as our last time, the opening kickoff wasn't a very deep one for the uh, for the Dragons due to this uh, strong wind. And here we go, set the kickoff with Antonio Graham back to receive. Short kick, only gets about the 20 that will receive. And he'll return it for about six yards before being contacted by the Lynchburg defense. So the hand to pass will start on their own 31 yard line. And probably get a good one or two more plays in here in before the end of the first quarter. Pirates offense has looked pretty good here in this game so far, to say the least. Running game has looked efficient. Passing games look very efficient, even threw a couple of chick plays in there for the fans here at homecoming. And the Pirates will look here. It'll be interesting to see the, the play call here. Um, they're going to try to go for a big hitter here just to end the quarter before the quarter's out, or you just look to run the ball, play the downs, and get to the second quarter. Easton in there running back to hand it off to him. He gets a nice little gap, tries to make a cut inside, gets contacted. Nice run there by Easton. Looking game's like, about five yards. Looking like they're going to try to get one more snap in before the quarter as the clock is. We just got under 10 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. And I don't know if they're going to get it in. Three seconds showing on the game clock. And they do not. So that's the end of the first quarter. 20 to 7 is the score. Hampton Pirates leading Lynchburg and Dragons. We'll be right back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South. Back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South football, Hampton versus, versus Virginia Lynchburg Dragons. 20 to 7 is the score as we start the second quarter. Pirates second in about four. Quarterback keeper, he's looking to get the first down himself, will fall just short of the line of game. Devin Williams so far has had an efficient game. He's 8 for 10. And they're going to give them the first down. He's 8 for 10 right now for 119 yards. Um, and I believe a touchdown. So he's been pretty efficient um, throwing the ball. And now they're trying to get his legs involved. Quick screen play here for the Pirates. They get it in another good game here by the Pirates. Looks like it's going to be a first down. But a flag coming from behind the safety. That's looking like in the, the holding area of the field where when that referee's throwing the ball on that slot receiver. Yeah, it comes from the back judge. Look like it will be a holding. Holding, holding, holding the offense. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. And another big play call back here for the Pirates after a, a good catch and run there by, uh, by Aiden Johnson. So yeah, They will assess the penalty from the call, so... It's still a good seven-yard game, so it'll go from <clears throat> three yards out. So it'll just be first and 13 instead of being first and 20 for the Pirates. Shotgun has a receiver on the edge, and the ball is incomplete. Another flag comes in from the back judge as we await the call. And this could go in one of either ways in this situation. Looks like it's a pass interference on the offense. So a couple of quick penalties. Pirates only hit one penalty in the first quarter. Starts off the second quarter with back-to-back -back penalties. Put themselves in a bad hole. Now it turns into a second and 23 here for the Pirates. So here are the Pirates. You're just trying to get some of the trying to get some of those yards back here. Um, you don't need to get them all back in one play. You got three downs to do it. Just try to Maybe get about 10 to 15 yards here. Um, get the ball out there to your receivers or get it in the Will Robinson's hand. And kind of just let those guys do what they do out in space and, and get a big play that way. You expect it, probably a draw a screen here, and they do get a run right towards the inside. A couple of good blocks, bounce it back outside. Nice game here for Robinson. As he gets about five of those yards back, but another flag comes from the backfield again. And we talked about that chippiness early, and this flag looks like it's going to have something to do with that as they were uh, kind of piling in there on Will Robinson, even though he was already out of bounds. So get away, 
another call here. Three penalties on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays. And this one looks like it's going against the Hampton Pirates once again. So it'll be unnecessary roughness against the Pirates. That's a 15-yard penalty. And this one's to a foot first and very long now. And Alec Dana must have got mixed up in there in that big pile up um, that was going on as Robinson was trying to, uh, they were pursuing Robinson. But um, here again, now it's going to be second and or first and super long uh, for the Pirates again. This is definitely not the way he wanted this drive to go to start of the quarter. So expecting probably just another handoff here just so you can get a few yards back here. And another penalty to delay a game against the Pirates. Yeah, Pirates may just want to go ahead and punt this ball and get this drive out of the way and restart next series. Uh, they're definitely going in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's four penalties against the Pirates in a row. Find themselves in a second in what is more than 30 yards. Shotgun, they're going to look to see if they can get a first down here. And Williams takes off with the run, gains about seven yards, gets hit pretty hard there. Gets all the way to the 22-yard line. Still third and very long to go here. And that was a good overfield tackle there. But the Pirates on the year was average. They were they were pretty penalized pretty heavily throughout the year, but only 66 and a half yards um, in penalty yardage uh, per game. Well, I think they've already matched that on this drive. Shotgun formation going to look to throw again. See if they can get the first down. Deep throw. It's a triple coverage and it's intercepted. Ball's being returned. Has some blockers ahead. Gets all the way to the Pirates 20 yard line and is now tackled. So, not the way you want to decide the quarter for the Pirates. It's four back to back Marvin penalties. Grunchy. Then the interception thrown by Williams. That was Marvin Grunchy on that play. He, he They sat back there and that's part of the reason you kind of don't want to get into it, try to get it all back on one play because the coverage is kind of set to take away those deep throws like that. Um, and on the ball, it kind of stayed in the air. Defensive back had, was just sitting there waiting on it to come to him. Yeah, you kind of spoke on it before. If the play even evolved, just run it, punt the ball away. Let's not uh, commit any mistakes, but the Pirates tried to get the first down, tried to force it, and end up throwing an interception. Uh, and here you have it. It's a two-score game, 13-point game for Lynchburg. You get a touchdown here, the extra point, you're looking at a six-point game. Oh, man, you're looking at a dog fight if you're the Pirates here on homecoming. It was a, looked to be a really well-handled game for the Pirates as we started off early with a 20-0 lead. And that was a good throw there by Stevenson through coverage um, to find the wide-open uh, wide receiver. And now you're looking at first and goal here as uh, McKinney with the catch there to, to get it down inside the Pirates' 10-yard line. Yeah, Lisberg is trying to line of momentum here on the defense and the offensive end. Now his first and goal at the seven-yard line of the Pirates. They'll hand it off. K Keeper, excuse me. Nice move there by the quarterback, and he gets in for the touchdown. That's Stevenson on the quarterback keeper. And just like that, like you said, it's now a seven-point game. And you can look at the sidelines and see the change in energy. You see those those kids, those young men from uh, Lynchburg, they're, they have all the air up under. They're bouncing up and down. And, and on the pirate sideline, you can see them, the faces, the kind of the energy is like, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, but that's why when you get an opportunity to put teams away, you have to execute. You have to find a way to slam the door and take all the energy, and they did not. So they set up for the field goal attempt. And here again, it's a seven-point game. You make the extra point. It's a six-point game. Um, your defense has been playing pretty good. Um, here lately, offense has been able to move the ball. Field goal is up and good. Six point game, 22 14. And what was it? A one, the one time lopsided of game, 20 0 lead. Now it's going to by fire, kissed by melty American cheese on a golden toasty bun. Mouth watering flavor at a jaw dropping price. Charbroiled slider starting at $1.25, only at Hardy's. Back here on ESPN's coverage of Big South football. 20 to 14 is your score. Pirates leading the Dragons by just six points and what was it earlier, a 20-point lead. And 
I'm the dragons. I might even try an onside kick here. And they go with the high uh, pooch kick. And instantly tackled and dragged back. And you can see it right now from the Lynchburg sideline. A lot of emotion, a lot of intensity from their sideline. You see on the head of the fire sideline, not the same energy. Uh, and, and you see it with hits like that. That momentum and people you, people, you always wonder, is that a real thing? When you see games like this and you see how the energy just shifts from one to one side to the other, that momentum's real. And uh, right now, Lynchburg has it. They're kind of, I'm pretty sure if I'm them, they're licking their chops to get back out there because uh, they feel confident. They feel like they can stop this Pirates team, this Pirates offense, and, and uh, walk away here with a, with a win. Handoff. Goes to about 10 yards there. Good run. William Robinson on the carry. And William Robinson with the big carry for the first down. And the Pirates are going to look to speed up the tempo here and, and try to try to get some plays off quick here and maybe get Lynchburg off balance. Another handout to Robinson. Goes for about five yards. Good game. Brings up a second and five. Again, Pirates going with this fast, quick offense. Which worked for them when they first had a couple of drives. Get the defense on the edge. Another quick snap. Play action. Goes for the pass. There's a couple of open receivers. Good toss and catch there. Catch was made by number 10, Byron Barney. He was one of the guys. He's one of the guys. If you're Lynchburg, you know you have to put you have to plan for it because he's an explosive weapon in the pass game. Um, and they're looking to try to give him the ball here now. I, wouldn't be surprised if they come back to him some point in this drive. Quick pass there towards the sideline. Pirates look like they're a little refocused now here offensively. They kind of got a little uh, lackadaisical uh, as this as this drive was going on. Play action. A lot of pressure there. Williams looking for a receiver, has one sideline. Goes home, a lot of space, a lot of green gas will be first and goal. Here for the Pirates about the five yard line. That was number 88, Marcel Paul with the catch. Marcel Paul on the reception. Again, they're still going with this fast pace. And you can see Lynchburg looking a little tired as they, they move around out there. Another town bank, first down. And we have first and goal down here for the Pirates at the six yard line. Hand it off. Kept by the quarterback. He'll take, uh, take it in himself. Gets all the way down to the one yard line. Williams with the quarterback keeper there. Looked like a one pass option. Pulled it out. Didn't have anything he really wanted. Kept it, kept it himself. Was unable to get the touchdown, but gets all the way to the first uh, one yard line. And it looks like we're going to have a, a penalty here on the play as the referees have had a quick meeting. Um, and it looks like it might be in the neighborhood of holding. Wait on the official of the car. So that should be face masks on the defense, which would be half the distance to the goal, which would just be a couple of inches here for the Pirates. And here I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback sneak here, being that you're going to be pretty much a nose length away from a first uh, touchdown here. So Williams will get under the center. Lynchburg will crowd the box. They go with a quarterback sneak and get in. It will be touchdown for the Pirates. So good answer there for the Hampton Pirates as they get seven, six points right back on the board. 26 to 14 is the score. And that's the Delman Williams' second rushing touchdown of the game um, as he had one earlier. Um, but for the short sneak, we'll go ahead and get it in there. And you need to add that answer if you're the Pirates. Uh, and they, they went, what they did was they went back to what was working, their fast-paced uh, offense, the no huddle, uh, where they were just moving the ball as quick. They weren't subbing anybody out. Didn't give Lynchburg a chance to get settled in their coverages. I'm um, able to take advantage of that and get the score here on this drive. Yeah, great. Well put together drive there by the offense. Field goal is up and good. 
27 to 14 is the score. And we have some more championists out there on the field, Lester. The score. 54 remaining here in the second quarter. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with you here on ESPN Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus, coverage of Big South football. Hampton Pirates leading 27 to 14 against the Lynchburg Dragons. And what was a good momentum change for the Pirates, much needed. They came out with a 20 early lead, 14 unanswered points by Lynchburg immediately after. And the Pirates came down to score the touchdown. Kick is off, and it is received. And it's a big hole. Gets all the way down to the 35, to the 40, to the 50. That's at the green grass in front of him. 20-10 touchdown, Lynchburg. And just like that, they get seven points right back. And what seemed to be a blowout is now turning into a shootout. Yeah, I think the Pirates got this, are definitely getting more than they signed up for with this game. Uh, great return uh, by the Dragons. They're a good job of him. And, and a lot of it was there's some good blocking. But the returner just did a great job of making people miss. And he got up, found a seam, and, uh, and was able to outrun the coverage. He had some good blocks ahead of him. The only person he had to miss, make miss was the kicker. Made a good move on the kicker, and he had definitely green grass in front of him. Quick six points there for Lynchburg. And here just looking at some stats where that really won't affect the overall stat line. But looking at Lynchburg is having some success against the Pirates, Dave. Rushed for uh, 86 yards so far in this game, and a lot of that was on that big run by uh, Tomas, by Tomas Stevenson. I'm sorry, Tomas Newman on the big run early in the game. But they've also had some success throwing the ball. And Lynchburg again with a lack of communication, and execution was missing a whole player, so they get a delay of game, make this kick a little bit tougher. Which you wouldn't think is that much of a big deal, but it's been a couple of big, turn, uh, weird special team plays going on today. Field goal is up and good. 27 to 21 is the score. And we've seen two special team touchdowns, a block punt by the Pirates, and now the kick return for a touchdown by Lynchburg. Again, they made it a six point game again and uh, made it a dog fight for the Pirates. Uh, what was looking like was about to be an, uh, an early exit for a lot of your starters by the second half. It's now looking like this game is going to come down uh, to the fourth quarter and, and the who can execute better and make the least amount of, uh, amount of mistakes. So Hampton University out to return. And again, the Pirates have had some good success offensively as well if we look at the stats. The Pirates so far on 15 rushing attempts and rushed with 97 yards. Um, and in the air, um, they have 11 receptions. Uh, Devin Woods has been really effective through the air other than the one pick. Uh, but he's thrown for 164 yards so far. So we're set to kick off the football here. 9.38 remaining here in the half. 27 to 21 is your score. Kick is off. It will be a big kick. Goes about to the 15 yard line. Will be returned. Antonio Graham's going to try to answer here. And he gets a good return, only down to about the 36 yard line. On the kickoff return. So to have the Pirates offense, who's looked pretty good here in this game, will return to the field and try to get those seven points right back. And the chippiness is something to watch out for in this game. You see. Um, after a lot of the big plays or things happen, you see a lot of guys kind of, you see them meeting up at the pile and pushing around. And um, those are the last thing you want to get, those unsportsmanlike penalties that can get you kicked out of game. Or, and that's going to hurt the team. Or the penalty yardage. The Pirates have had a bunch of penalties that have hurt drives they've had. Um, last thing you need to get, a, or after a pretty good starting position, to get a penalty that's going to push you back. Uh, option, quarterback keeper, Williams keeps it, takes it for about three yards before being tackled. 
Be second and seven here for the Pirates. They get back to the line of scrimmage very quick. Really quick. Quick snap, handoff. Big run for Robinson. Breaks off a couple of one arm tackles and gets the first down. Nice eight yard run there by Robinson. First down for the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, good job by the offensive line of opening up a seam up there and uh, and creating a crease for Williams to, uh, William Robinson to run through. Yeah, the Pirates are checking out. They see something in the defense they think they can take advantage of here. And also Robinson once again. This time he's bottled up in the backfield. Be a long about a couple. And on that play, that's just one of those situations where you try to make something out of nothing. Uh, but the defense has sniffed it out pretty good. He's just sometimes just got to take what they give you, take the, the one or two yard game and walk away uh, with second down. Now you have second and super long, and these haven't been good situations for the Pirates that they complete the ball to Antonio Graham. You have a good play call there. Lynchburg is making another run. There's a play action. Ball goes straight down the middle. Good reception. The first down. The Pirates in their opponents 30. Another good drive here by the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, they've had success. Williams, they've, Williams with the play action again, excuse me. He gets taken down in the backfield for a sack. That would be number 98. Excuse me, 88 shirt. Austin on the quarterback sack. Excuse me, Austin. Andrew Austin on the play there. Uh, I think Delman should have, he should have held, he held on to it just a little bit too long there. That was good coverage by the uh, by the Dragons, uh, giving that D-line a chance to get there, and it just was a, Delman held on to it a little bit long instead of getting rid of it. I agree with you, Delman Williams having a pretty good game with that one. This time, you just got to let it go out of bounds and just take the incomplete pass. This time, trying to escape the pocket, gets a couple of yards before being hit from behind. He gets... Some good yards there, brings up a short. Second, uh, second about five. Yeah, I was surprised there. Excuse me, third and five. Third surprised and seven. the flags didn't come out there on that play. Looks like Delman was out of bounds um, as the hit from the back did happen. It's third and seven here for the Pirates. White gets it. Excuse me, William gets it. Play action. Looking down the field, has no one. Scrambling, trying to find somebody down the field. Gets a block. Gets all the way down to about the 20 yard line and will get the first down. So good wheels there by Williams to keep, keep it alive, kept his uh, eyes downfield, couldn't find no one to escape the pocket, picked up the first down. Uh, he's trying to, looks like he's trying to go through all his reads and um, the first and second and third options aren't there, so he's trying to let the guys create after that, but can't hold on to the ball that long. But smart play there is there. Dragons defense sniffed out the screen and was ready to intercept it had he thrown it. Yeah, good keep by him just with that time being smart and just going down, taking the just getting the line of scrimmage, taking the game of nothing instead of forcing the pass. And like you said, they snuff it out on the way, could have been an interception easily if he would have forced that pass over there. So Williams with it, second and ten. Handoff, nice game. And it's close to a first down. How about this head the Pirates offensive of line? They're doing. Some, they're making some holes in there. And they're even giving uh, Delman a lot of time to throw the ball and sit in the pocket and pass. Um, I think a lot of kudos needs to go to his offensive line and their performance. And this one was a quarterback keeper, but again, Lynchburg has saw this option out all the way. They get a tackle for a loss. It'll be fourth down now. Fourth and about seven. Offense still on the field. They look like they're going to go for it instead of kicking the ball here. Yeah, I think with with how well with how well the the uh, Dragons of Lynchburg have been playing, I think they feel like they may have their best bet of just trying to outscore them instead of settling for a field goal here, try to keep putting touchdowns on the board. Yeah, the offense have seen uh, got a lot of success today, playing really well, and 
this would show a lot of confidence and prudence if he sends his office out there and would, would not be an easy fourth down. This is not a fourth and two or fourth and one. We're talking about a good five to seven yards here right. for the Pirates to gain. So that's why you call, like you say, you call the timeout here. You get a chance to talk it over. I mean, maybe make the best decision. It looks like what they're going to do, they're going to go ahead and kick the field goal. Um, coach just decided maybe it was too long and not worth the risk. Go ahead and take the uh, take the three points if you get them. Give yourself a, a nine-point lead in. And keep it going. And hope that your defense can come on out. Here's Lomax with the... So this will be about a... 20, excuse me, about a 19 yard field goal. Field goal attempt is up and is straight through the uprights and good. 30 to 21 is your score. Hampton Pirates leads by nine with 521 left here in the half. We'll be right back here on ESPN covers of Big South Football. Back here on ESPN Plus, 521 remaining here in the half. Ready for kickoff is the Pirates. Three points added to the board for them after the field goal. Yeah, we'll see how they adjust to this kickoff as last time they kicked it off. This is a great kick. Sails to the end zone and out of bounds will be a touchback. So this time, the best way to solve the issues, don't give them <laughs> the option to return there. Now the ball should come out to the 25-yard line. And now the, the, the thing for Hampton is you got to answer with your defense. You got to go out there and, and get some stops, go out there and uh, set the tone and kind of try to steal back the momentum of this game. Dragons will start on their own 25-yard line. They've, kind of, they've had some success against this Pirate defense moving the ball and and honestly doing some of the things they wanted to do, especially here in the second quarter. So you see this Lynchburg offense has struggled majority of the first quarter, really showing off here in the second quarter. Got a couple of good drives here. And a little couple of quick pitches and a good play design, a lot of green grass and blockers ahead. The Pirates quick to the ball, but still a beauty. A good game. This will be a first down here for Lynchburg football. That's good. What a good two pitches there on a the reverse uh, <laughs> run. The old double reverse. And now off of that, Lynchburg has shown that they have some some plays in there, some trick plays in there. I would look for there to possibly be a double reverse pass. So with the success Lynchburg has had on the offense, it's starting to open up the playbook a little bit. Breaking out some of these trick plays that they tried earlier in the game. Well, if you're a, Lynchburg is playing with house money, so they're not they're they come into this game as the underdog, and when you look at it, they were a huge underdog, so they don't have anything to lose by just hey, we're gonna just see what we can get done. We're gonna take some chances, and it's been working for them so far. Where you're looking at a, a nine point game here at the five minute mark in the second quarter couple of injuries there. Both players able to make it off, but Darion Carr um, looks to have tweaked something after that last play. Um, so he's come out, um, and in his place, they've brought in uh, Curtis Holmes um, at the safety spot. So we'll see if that's something to look for or look at um, as this game progresses. Handoff by Lynchburg goes for nothing. Pappas in the backfield waiting for the running back there. Tomas Newsom, uh, I'm sorry, that was not Tomas Newsom. That was uh, Marquise uh, Malik Harris on the run and unable to uh, find the edge as the Pirates were able to chase him down. And they're looking at a second and long after the, the loss of yardage. It's Steve's looking for, towards the sideline for a call here. Second about 14 for him. Newman switch sides. And it'll be a screenplay towards the sideline. A couple of good blocks, good moves. And he gets a 
Nice game there. It'll be about third and two here for the Lynchburg Dragons after the screenplay. And the and uh, the receivers for uh, Lynchburg have been doing a great job on those screens of blocking on the edge and giving that that's, that receiver whenever they catch the screen a chance to make something happen. The yeah, Lynchburg makes a lot of their decisions quick. A lot of the draw screen plays and shots are running towards the middle of the field. You see a handoff here to Newman. Makes one man miss, gets the first down. He has a lot of green grass in front of him again. To the 20, to the 10. He slowed down. He's mocking the price at this point with the touchdown. Another big run for Newman. Newman, his second of the game. And he's having a big first half here. And the missed tackle there at the edge. The Pirates actually had a good call, play call. But the missed tackle on the edge uh, gave him a chance to turn the corner. And uh, Newman showed you he has some wheels. He's, he's broke off two really long runs and no Pirate has been able to run him down. And now what you're looking at, if you're a Lynchburg, what was uh, seven, it was going back and forth between seven and 13. So now a three-point game with the extra point to ensue. And that, that kick like, is up and it's good. That was a 50, 56 yard run there by Newman. Extra point attempt was good. Now 30 to 28 is the score. Just a two point lead for the Pirates who won to lead by 20. We just had 331 left in the first half and what's been the story, which seems like this one half has been about two different halves. First quarter which was all Pirates. And this second quarter which just seemed like it's been all Lynchburg. Pirates have seen some success on the offensive end. But the defense of the Pirates have not found a way to stop the Lynchburg offense. Yeah, they've done a, a great job of, of just hanging in there and, and, you know, kind of weathering the storm. And sometimes that's what it's about. They, they had confidence in their ability. They weathered that early rally by the Pirates. Um, and once they started making plays, that confidence came. That we can play with these guys. Um, they're not as good as, as it seems they would have been or... Um, we're going here to just be the team they're going to beat up for homecoming. They didn't look blind by into it, and you can tell by the way they're playing. And the confidence is showing, like you say, on the run. Um, Newsom was kind of, kind of, or Newman was kind of just mocking the Pirates before he went in for the score. So set up for kickoff here it is the Lynchburg Dragons. They'll kick it off, short kick. Gets about to the 25 yard line. Somebody has to get it quick, and they do fall on top of it. So the Pirates would start their drive on the 27-yard line, which was a pretty good and dangerous play there for the Pirates. Good kick for Lynchburg. Dangerous. Lynchburg, has, and, I, I, and you have to give this coaching staff a really – you have to give them kudos. You have to, um, they've been pushing all the right buttons for their team. They've been putting them in good situations. Here with, the, uh, like you say, with the kick, great kick and how that ball just died, that's coaching them to call those – put those players in those situations trust they're going to execute it uh, and they've been doing that and because of that players are playing with confidence they're out there making plays and we have a ball game on hand yeah Henry University still has the lead playing pretty good off the end but somehow they need to find a way to match the energy on all assets of the football game run yeah. handoff goes to about three yards the other thing I'm seeing here from Lynchburg is the ability to, to make tackles uh, they've been able to get the Pirates down for the most part here and not let those big plays happen here the second quarter. Not a lot of big plays for the Pirates. A couple of trick plays went for big plays, but most of the time, most of, the, of their yards they had to earn. As well, gets pushed out of bounds there. Wheels run out of bounds. And there's a flag on the on the play on the far sideline. Looks like it's going to be a legal participation on somewhere. Maybe either one of the receivers stepped out of bounds and didn't come back in or Flags down about the 42-yard line. Uh, legal substitution on the defense. Of the Pirates. Playing with 12 people. Substitution violation on the defense. Five yards in on this from the previous spot. Replay, second down. That's looking right. It would be substitution violation on Lynchburg. Five-yard penalty. Now gives the Pirates a great opportunity to take a shot here with it just being second and one have a play here to uh got a play to play with really right here this is your throwaway down here so i would look to take a shot here hands it off to easton pass was just elect to get the first down here and they do good run by easton for gain about three yards sets up a first down on their own 42. 
And this is a really important drive here for the Pirates because they kick off the start of the second half, so Lynchburg's going to get the ball. So you want to come away with some points here because Lynchburg, you can see the energy on the field and how they're playing. Uh, you want to keep those points on, keep putting points on the board and putting pressure on them. But if you don't get a score here, in their minds, Lynchburg is saying, hey, we're going to come out in the second half and we're going to take, away, take off from this game. And again, Williams goes down in the backfield and what looks to be a screen play. Got blown up really quickly. A lot of pressure was in Williams' face. And he tucked it and tried to just get back to the line of scrimmage, but goes down. It'll be a loss about four yards here. Second to 14 for the Pirates. That defensive line is doing a good job here in the second half, uh, this second quarter, of, of keeping Williams in the pocket and not letting him break free. And a good toss and catch. Catch me by Dana. Dana. The reception. Pretty close to a first. Oh, it is a first down. Here. And it will be a first down for the Pirates. 152 left here in the half. And we have a whistle on the field. And they're going to continue action here. The Pirates look to go, go ahead with the hurry up offense here. Yeah, and for Lynchburg, they were able, because of the stoppage of play, they were able to sub out some players and get some fresh legs on the field. And Williams had a receiver, but the receiver wasn't looking towards the football, so he had to sit there and take a sack instead of trying to force the ball and get an interception. It's a tough play there by Williams. Could have threw it away there, but takes a sack instead. Yeah, uh, and Edrington, Daquan Edrington on the on the sack there, gets up with the with the shoulder shimmy after making a big play, but that's what happens when 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 – you got that swag, you got that confidence. They're just pressing all the right buttons, and this isn't looking good right now for the Pirates. They're going in the wrong direction. So another stop in the backfield by Lynchburg. It brings up a third and 14. And Lynchburg will call the timeout with all the momentum on this side. Now Lynchburg is thinking here, this is what they're thinking. We take this timeout, we get a stop. We can uh, get the ball back and score the ball the back and possibly score before the half. And that shows some confidence right there. Shows you the switch of momentum here in this football game. Yeah. Coach Rome, again, has been pressing all the right buttons here for his, for his ball club. Um, he has these guys believing that they can play in this game and they can win this game. And it's evident in what you see from the team and how they're playing out there on the field. So this is going to be a big drive. And I said it before, the Pirates have to come away with something here. Um, you want to come away with some points because I don't think you want to start the second half with all the momentum sitting with Lynchburg. So I bring this question to you. It's about third and 14. Would you try to go the first down, pass the ball here, or would you just run it and force Lynchburg to waste another timeout? If I'm the Pirates, I think you got to go for the first down because I just think you you have to put yourself in a position to score. And now that play may be a run play to get. They may have a play on their call sheet that says, hey, we know we can get 10, 15 yards on this, this play. The real question is going to be if you get it to fourth and one, do you go for it or do you punt? So this looks like a pass. So he's trying to get the first down here. And come from behind and tucks the ball and goes down. Be another sack for Lynchburg in the backfield. Will be fourth down. Another timeout here by Lynchburg. So they'll use their seconds. Johnson on the quarterback sack. Heisman Johnson. That's one heck of a name there. Heisman Johnson. Um, in on the sack. But again, that's. That sack was a result of the good coverage from the secondary of uh, Lynchburg. They were able to. They were able to, in that situation, they were able to uh, make Delman hold on to the ball longer than he would want to and gave the D-line a chance to, to get that to the quarterback. So, so 106 remaining here in the half. Pirates look to punt the football. Including you think Lynchburg will get the ball back with just under a minute left and one timeout? And the real question here is the real situation that's going to haunt the park. If, if Lynchburg scores, if they get this ball and they can score, and they got to come out in that second half and play defense, uh, what type of adjustments are you looking to make? Uh, because Lynchburg is going to come out, and I, I can almost guarantee you. They're going to be high, and they're going to come out and throw the kitchen sink at the Pirates. They set up for the return here. Good punt here by the Pirates. Goes all the way back to the 15, returned. 
Now Lynchburg bottled up quickly. Gets about the 22-yard line with 54 seconds remaining. 54 seconds remaining in this half, and what's been a wild half to say the least. And the flag comes out late with some more chippiness on the side of the Pirates and Lynchburg. And this is what you definitely have to get in control if you're a Pirate, that if you want on the Pirates, because Lynchburg, hey, they've been a little chippy. They've been John and, you know, Hampton in their mind already felt. That's just unnecessary. Especially with 54 seconds remaining here in the half, you don't want to give any free yards to the offense. And that's just just not 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 good execution by the Hampton Pirates defense, giving 15 free yards. And and for the uh, for the Lynchburg for the Dragons here. This two minute, your two minute drill, your, your two minute offense is really gonna be important in how you execute it here. Handoff goes for nothing. Pirates got him in the backfield. That was Newman on the carry. Jason Davidson on the, on the stop there. But again, if you're Lynchburg, you gotta to get to the ball quick because you've already wasted about 20 seconds here just trying to get set up. So you need a play where you can push it down the field. And they look to do that, goes towards the sideline. Ball is caught, out of bounds. Well short of the first down to be about second, about eight to go. Well, you're looking at 23 seconds on the clock. Um, it's third down, and I believe... About five. And I believe they've used all their timeouts. So now you have to work the sideline. you got to get the ball down the field here to give yourself a chance, so you gotta go for it all over, go for the home run. Ball down the middle, through the hands of the receiver. Could have been an interception, dangerous pass there. Well, not a dangerous pass, dangerous situation there. <laughs> it was a good pass, just went straight through the hands of the receiver. Could have ended up as an interception, but three and out. And let's we forced to punt the ball with 19 seconds remaining here in the half. That was a that was a good job by the pirate defense. They kind of dialed up some pressures to kind of to not give the quarterback a chance, not give Stevenson a chance to kind of set his feet and find an open receiver uh, and get a, get him off the field. Uh, but good job, Coach Rome did a good job of putting his guys in the, in the situation where they had, could possibly get some point. That's points out of it. Fair catch caught. Pirates get the ball in about the twenty-two yard line. Just 13 ticks remaining here at the half, and it's been a very eventful half. Pirates once led by 20, but now lead by only two points. 30 to 28 is the score. And here, if you're the Pirates, you hand the ball off, see if you can hit a home run, um, and then you just go ahead and take the half, talk it over as a coaching staff, make your adjustments, um, and look to come out in the second half and um, hopefully have a replay of the first quarter. Yeah, and if you're Lynchburg's coach, you're definitely in the locker room saying, keep the intensity, keep the energy, keep pushing it right now. They're at the heads of the Hampton players, to say the least. Definitely. So they're just going to nail the football here, and we'll, that would take us to half. 30 to 28 is the score here at Armstrong Stadium, homecoming for Hampton University, what is a really good game. 30 to 28, we'll be back here on ESPN Plus coverage of the Big South football. Big, good, real breakfast at Hardee's. Welcome to the Hampton.
Today's homecoming matchup, the Hampton Pirates currently lead the Lynchburg Dragons with a very close score of 30 to 28. In the first quarter, the Pirates completely dominated with scoring three touchdowns and only allowing the Dragons one. There was a huge momentum shift in the game as the Dragons scored three touchdowns in the second quarter when the Pirates scored none. The Pirates hope to gain the momentum that they had in the first quarter, and the Dragons hope to continue the momentum that they had in the second quarter for the duration of the game. It's a very close game. Wait. Yeah, audio. They want you hanging the audio. They want you hanging the audio. ESPN. Back here on ESPN Plus, coverage of Big South Football 30-28 is the score. Second half started, Hampton kicked off. Short kick goes about to the 40-yard line. So good field position to start off here for the Lynchburg Dragons. It was a very eventful first half. The Pirates jumped on top with a 20 early lead, but the Dragons came storming back quickly in the second quarter. And bring this game all the way back up to a two-point game. Like you said, it was a tale of two quarters in the first quarter. I mean, at the end of the first quarter, it was 27 Hampton. Um, they outscored them 27, but then in the second quarter, Lynchburg had the edge of 21 to 10 there in the second quarter. Um, and here in a moment, we'll highlight some of the key moments from that first half. Stevenson with the handoff. Uh -oh. Rush goes for about a couple yards here. That was, yeah, that was on the carry again, uh, who had a pretty big first half um, as he rushed for 130 yards and two touchdowns there in the first half, um, really helping ignite that Dragon offense. And here on the carry again, he picks up maybe about two yards again to make it third and medium. So that brings a third and managed move here for Lynchburg, third and about five yards. Go back into the shotgun with Stevenson and Newman in the back. I gonna say, I'll tell you, they, they, uh, this is a big third down as they can look to take the edge here in this first half. And they go with the screen play, but Hampton was all over it. And the game the play goes for about one yard, so it'll be fourth down, about four for the Pirates. We'll come out here and get a defensive stop here early in the second half. And that's what you needed if you were the Pirates, get a stop, get off the field, get your offense back on the field, and, and, and not let them continue the momentum of what they had in the first half. Set back to punt. Punt is up. Good punt. Sales to about the 10-yard line receive. No fair catch. Couple of blockers ahead. He gets past the 20 all the Close to the 25-yard line, about to the 24. So the Pirates will start their drive on the 24 on their own 24. Yeah. And we'll go to break here. Just starting up the second half, we'll be right here with Big South coverage on ESPN Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South football. Happy University forces a three and out on the first drive by Lynchburg of the half. And they'll start off this drive on their own 24. Shotgun Williams has it, pass it out. And deflected, barely intercepted. Lynchburg was all over that play. I was gonna say that was a great job on there in coverage. That was a great job in coverage um, there by Lynchburg. Um, on that play was number 27. Uh, Lamont Thomas, as he read the, the quick quick pass by the uh, Hampton Pirates, and um, almost took that one back the other way for some points. Shotgun looking to throw again over the middle. Has a receiver. Gets all the way to the 40-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Pirates. That was number 20, Antonio Graham on the reception. 
as the sun tries to peek out here, and it's been a mostly cloudy day here at Armstrong Stadium in Hampton, Virginia. And in this second half, it's going to be interesting to see how do they protect Delman Williams. Uh, there in the second half, in the first half, they were able to sack him five times. And that was a quick screen pass over. Goes for about 14 yards, but the flag is on the field. That looked like that's going to be a holding on the receiver on the outside. Yep, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a holding on the Pirates, and I think it'll be called on the spot of the foul. And it'll be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, which would just give you <laughs> first and 10 once again, so they'll practically replay the down here. Yeah, but they really have to do a good job of keeping Dale Williams upright, and part of it, too, I think is uh, changing up what they're doing offensively and maybe going to some quicker passes like you've seen so far this half so that he's not um, sitting in the pocket being vulnerable by holding on to the football. Hand up down the middle. Good run for Robinson. He gets hit at about the 48-yard line. Run for was a good about six yards. Be second and four here for the Pirates. And they're going back with this, this high, fast-paced offense to try to get Lynchburg off balance and it finds a big hole up the middle. Good run by Robinson, straight down the middle with the hurry up offense, goes all the way down to the opponent's 20 yard line. Good run there by Will Robinson, who's been having a really good game, a couple of runs, he's been stopping the uh, backfield, but the times he does get a little bit of green gas and able to plant his feet, he's been making some good runs here today. And, uh, and for the Pirates, the big the big things that were going for the Pirates first half, Devin Williams had a pretty effective uh, first half, other than the sacks, he had the one pick, but the two rushing touchdowns, 203 yards in the air. Uh, they got to get that running game going, um, and that's looked like what they're trying to get they get going here after those big couple of runs there by uh, Will Robinson. Yeah, back on the ground again with Easton this time. He gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage and gets tackled for about a yard loss. And what we saw here as well in the second half already as a continuation of the first, the penalties by the Pirates is they were penalized six times for 67 yards. Um, and that's their average per game for the season. And they're taking a shot to the end zone here. Has an open wide receiver. Good defense, but the ball is caught. That was number 10, Byron Barney on the catch. Somehow he made that catch because the defensive back actually hit the ball, got his hand and deflected it as it bounced back into, look like it bounced back into his hands. Great concentration by uh, Barney there on that play. Yeah, Williams had Barney wide open, but he kind of underthrew him a little bit. And the D-back barely got a hand on it, but Barney for some way somehow kept his focus and caught the football. Touchdown for the Pirates, 36-28 is the score. As they set up for the extra point attempt. So again, the Pirates offense looking pretty good. Moved the ball down the field quickly with the hurry up offense. We think Lynchburg hasn't really had much of an answer for all day. And this is how the Pirates started off the, uh, the game. They came out, uh, their opening drive, remember, was five plays, and it was bang, bang, bang. They were moving the ball up and down the field. And then something just changed in there where the momentum swung, and uh, Lynchburg was able to steal away the momentum. Well, we're going to break here. 37-28 is the score. Four minutes past the second half. We'll be right back here on ESPN+. Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus 11.08 here, remaining in the set of the third quarter. 37-28 is the score. Pirates up. Um, here we're getting ready for start this kickoff. Uh, but before we go there, uh, it's homecoming season here in Hampton. And homecoming, you get a lot of the alumni to come back. And we're fortunate to be blessed by uh, uh, all pro played as a rookie in the Pro Bowl as a kick returner for the Houston Texans. Um, Jerome Mathis, who was a um, standout wide receiver here, drafted by the Texans, broke Deion Sanders' record in the 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine. Uh, just wanted to get a chance to talk to you. Pirate Nation's out there listening. They want to hear from um, a guy such as yourself. Just want to know, how does it feel to be back home, to come back to a homecoming and uh, reignite with so many faces? Oh, it's great. I'm hitting good. It's glad, I'm glad to be back here. Beautiful home by the sea. Uh, I wouldn't rather be any other place right now, to be honest with you. 
And so how does it feel? You, you're looking at the field from another perspective now. Uh, for years, you were out there on the, on the gridiron, and everybody knew Jerome Mathis. Uh, now you stand up here and you're watching the Pirates. How does it feel to now to look out there as a, as a fan and not the guy that's out there making the touchdowns and hear his name call? It's very humble, you know. I'm very appreciative of what Hampton University has done for me, you know, on my journey throughout life. When I sit back and look at things that I've done and things that I, you know, reflect on, it's, it's a blessing. I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't rather be any other place than here. I don't have any regrets about coming to Hampton University at all. And all the kids that I come across, you know, Hampton University is always going to be my first choice for them to go. And another big play, throw and catch by Stevenson there to the wide receiver as they get a first down. And um, it looks like the Dragons are getting back in rhythm of of uh, what they were doing in the first half. They made some adjustments and they're coming out here and um, trying to push the doll, ball down the field. But, um, Jerome, one of the things that I remember from, from your playing days was Flight 238. Flight 238. You, there's a bunch of Virginia guys, and you guys used to go out there and make it happen. And, and – how was how was that being a part of something like that? Because that was like that was known. People were like planning to shut down flight two thirty eight. Me being one of them in practice, of course. But how did it feel being a part of that group and and the 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 camaraderie you guys had? Because all you guys were, I mean, four two guys or some a little faster than four two. But how did it feel to be a part of a special group like that? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, flight two thirty eight was something that we took upon ourselves as individuals. The, the, put the team on our shoulders and going up against guys like yourself in practice, you know, you guys made us better. And and that's what it was all about. Like it wasn't really the the three individuals that was involved in the two thirty eight. It was more against us going up against y'all in practice and making us better because we felt like in practice, you know, we don't have to fear anything because we're going up against the best guys every day. And and it's all about, you know, team competition, team camaraderie. Junior. And that's what Hampton University is, you know, that's, that's what we are, that's who we are. We, we like to build each other up instead of breaking each other down around here. Well, I'll tell you what, Drew, I'm not going to hold you up. I know there's a lot of other people you want to get out here and see, uh, but I'm glad you got a chance to stop by and, and come back home and see your family here, um, your Hampton family. Uh, continue to enjoy homecoming. Uh, I'm happy for the success you've had and the things you've been able to do and um, what you've brought to the Hampton University family. Um, go enjoy your homecoming. We appreciate you stopping on by. Thank you. Newman on the carry goes for about six yards, brings up a second and, excuse me, about a third and four. 33. Vince Burke holding the ball pretty well so far on this drive. Taking the ball about 50 yards so far. Big toss and catch is responsible for this drive. Pirates trying to slow up the Lynchburg offense. Stevenson has had himself a pretty good game here today, to say the least. Man, it's, it's amazing to see the change in him. In the first, his first couple series, he looked like a fish out of water as he was trying to escape the defense. But uh, here in this, and since the second quarter on, it's like he found his groove, he found his confidence, and they've called plays that have allowed him to be successful, and he's taking advantage of it. So they get the handball off to Newman. He gets stopped after just gaining about a yard. So good stop and push there by the Hampton the defensive line. And they were forced to punt here. Fourth and one, you would have thought Lynchburg would have thought about going for it, but decided to punt it. No way to risk it. There's so much time left here in the game. And they got a chance to pin Hampton back deep into their own territory. And one good sign here for the Pirates is uh, you had Darion Carr back out there in the first, um, on the field. Um, looks like the first half he might have tweaked something a little bit, a little hurt, but he's back out there on the field. And um, you can see a little bit difference in the defense with him on the field. And there's also been some noticeable names, I think, for the Pirates defense. They expected more out of early on in that game. Sproul was all over the place. He was making plays, but we hadn't really had the callers there. Um, since then, uh, Capri Doucette's another name that a lot of Pirate fans know um, who's been relatively quiet today. Hadn't really uh, made any uh, resounding plays that's kind of impacted the game. Um, not, to mean, not to say that those gentlemen aren't being effective in what they're doing, uh, but those guys are kind of the playmakers of the defense. You hadn't really seen that. Short toss over the middle. 
He was instantly contacted by two players to bounce off the tackles. He gets wrapped out the game in extra two yards. Goes to just about two yards. He's second to eight for the Pirates. And Antonio Graham um, had early in his half, he caught one of those crossing routes. And, and I think what they saw was because they ran so many vertical routes, the underneath was opened up for him. So they went to the crossing routes. Um, and Lynchburg has made an adjustment to that already. Handoff goes inside for about six yards. Robinson will get the first down. You got a player slow to get up out there. He looks a little woozy and being held up. Hopefully the young man is okay. And so it will be official timeout for right now. Is it checked on the injured player? Midway through the third quarter here. In that first half, um, I will say, if you're a fan of offense, there was a lot of offense in that first half. As uh, Lynchburg, as a, um, they racked up 223 yards, 225 yards of total offense, while the Pirates racked up 200 and uh, 323 yards of total offense. Lynchburg was able to get 150 yards of total offense, I mean, of rushing yards against the Pirates. And um, I don't know a defense in the country that wants to give up 150 yards in the game, let alone 150 yards in one half. So, um, but a lot of that came on some big runs by um, Newman, where he was able to um, get to the outside and uh, streak down the sideline against the Pirates. Yeah, Newman had two big runs here in this game. Looks like they found their rhythm. Um, Graham is becoming a, a, a weapon here as, he's, as Delman Williams is kind of locating them in those holes in the coverage. Yeah, this looks like the Hampton offensive corner is becoming more comfortable with these tosses coming from Williams as he's progressing in the game. He's getting more comfortable in the pocket and taking some strikes. Hand up goes inside to Robinson. Adele, excuse me, he's pulled out by Williams. He tries to get to the outside and he does gain about five yards and we'll get the first down that was a great read by delma williams to pull it um but I, I the pirates i see at some point are going to take advantage of a of a hole here in the defense as they go with these three receivers to one side the uh lynchburg is not adjusting well to it um with covering up that space absolutely right and again they pull it out williams had one person to beat we couldn't beat that one person gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage be around second and nine and a half here for the Pirates. Uh, Lynchburg has been doing a good job of really eliminating some of the Pirates' bigger weapons. Um, as Barney, who does have the touchdown reception here in the second half, in the first half was relatively quiet uh, per his normal uh, production. Good pocket for Robinson. I mean, for Williams gets the ball over to Robinson. He gets the first down, but a bad block in the Will back Robinson. will be called against the Pirates. That will go against number 85. I think, I believe that's Barney. That's Alec Dana. Excuse yeah. me, Alec Dana. Alec Dana on the, on, the, on the block in the back. But I think the ref, I saw him throw the flag, and I saw the block. Um, I, I feel like that might have been a questionable one. But, hey, the ref had a, definitely had a better angle than I had. And you caught it right there. Oh, they well, he picked up the flag, yep. and there wasn't a block in the back. I was looking dead at the block. So great job there by the officials coming together and working it out. I'm right there with you. It didn't look like he had him on the shoulder, but it's such a close call. Just nine times out of ten, that, that ref is going to throw that flag. That's why you don't really want to make that block. He had already had the first down. But that time he got, he got away with it, he got the shoulder. <laughs> but here we go here. The, the drive is still going. Got a first down. You're on the in, uh, Lynchburg territory looking to get some points out of this drive. Right over the middle once again. Antonio Graham on the reception. And they're seeing something in those that short underneath coverage where they're really taking advantage with those crossing routes and, and quick game stuff. Second and had the Pirates look like they read a little uh, much of like a, a sagging off type of defense from the uh, Dragons. They're playing about a good 10 yards back from each receiver, so they're just doing a lot of quick passes for about five yards. It's taking up, eating up edge of the field. And bad throw there by Williams into coverage. Gets intercepted, returned all the way about to the about the 40-yard line before he goes down. And that's why they're playing that sagging coverage because Hampton, they know Hampton likes the vertical game. They like to stretch the field with the passing game. 
And those DBs are doing a great job of being where they're supposed to be. They tried to influence the corner by sitting the hitch on the outside. But they've been jumping them so quick. The corner did a good job of seeing the hitch, but staying in his zone. And when Williams went to throw the ball. He never saw the corner sitting there in the in the third. And great play by uh, Lynchburg there and forcing the turnover. And, and, and again, these are the plays that have been keeping Lynchburg right there. In the game. In the game. And again, the Pirates, why well, stop was, was, was what was working? Um, handed it right down the middle. Short passes was working. They kept saying it off. Why well, take a shot deep when you can have the five yards you can get every time? So, Pirates, I take a shot that time. That time it bit them. And they turn over the ball. The Jags will start their drive on their own 40 yard line. Stevens is back. He'll toss it. His pass is nearly intercepted but falls into the hands of a Lynchburg player. And he's all the way down to the 10 to the 5. And he fumbles the ball on the one yard line. It's recovered. About to have the Pirates, and there'll be a touchback for the Pirates. Not a good play there by Lynchburg. He fumbled the ball on the one-yard line. It rose to the end zone and gets recovered by the Pirates. That was a great job of how, not giving up on the play and pursuing. But how about that play? Literally, nearly <laughs> intercepted, bounces to the hands of the receiver. The receiver gets all the way to the one-yard line and costs it up. And they're going to review this play, though. Yeah. That play right there sums up how this game has been so far. <laughs> Back and forth and all over the place, I'll tell you that. The pass should have been intercepted. Go straight through the hands. Can't remember who that was. Go straight to the receiver. Hey, nothing but green grass in front of him. Terry Chisholm on the recovery there, uh, not giving up. But I wouldn't be surprised if they reviewed this play because of, uh, even on the fumble, it looked like he may have got an elbow down before he fumbled it and they did review it i do believe so and they did confirm it so it'll be hampton pirates basketball on their own 20 yeah i mean excuse me football on their own 20 yard line jumping sports here yeah well we did have a little basketball on campus today with uh some schools coming in for some scrimmages over in the gym so so good coverage down the field by lynchburg and williams makes the right decision just throws it out of bounds but again, maybe that's the break that sparks the Pirates because, like you said, that should have been an interception. And the misfortune of it to go right into the receiver's hands, then the effort to keep chasing it down and forcing the fumble um, to get the ball back, um, those things can kind of change the way the game is going as Lynchburg kind of had that high and to see that that happened and it drops off uh, can really change things for the for both teams. Williams hands it off to Robinson. He bounces off a couple of defenders. Gets close to the first down yard line. It will fall just short. It'll be third down about inches. For the Pirates, they'll go off with a hurry-up offense. They'll try to snap it quick here. Hand it right back off to Robinson. And he is bottled up and stopped. And he will get the first yard. He will get the first down. Gains about two yards on the run. He'll get a break as Harriot um, comes in to spell him. Um, he did a uh, Harriot did a good job in the first half um, of spelling uh, Wooden Robinson to give him a break, and he did a good job with getting some good runs in there. So um, they've been having success here running. Let's see if they continue to give him to feed the ball to the backs. If I was Lynchburg, I'd be looking for a play action screen here. Pirates like to run that on first down to get some yards. They're actually looking to go down the field. Has an open man down the middle, but. I missed the play. He dumps it off to number 10, excuse me, Byron. Brian Barney. And he'll use his feet straight the first down. So he had Barney over the middle for about a three-yard pass, and Barney used his feet to get some extra, about well, 10 to 12 yards there for the first down. And Barney comes off the field. Looks like he might have got the wind knocked out of him or fell on the ball. He uh, was kind of holding his, his ribs or his stomach. Uh, but that was a great play design as Harry gets around the right uh, left corner and picks up about four there. But it was a great job of play design. They ran those vertical routes to pull that defense out of there, thinking the deep ball was coming. They just drug, ran the drag route with Barney across the field and uh, easy dump off run and catch for him. So Pirates still going with this hurry-up offense, which is, have worked so far, keeping the Lynchburg defense unable to substitute and keeping them off balance. Looking down the field, doesn't have no one. Looking to scramble. Gets out the pocket, and he'll get the first down and out of bounds. Holding that ball a little dangerous there. <laughs> yeah, I, 
gonna say, I know he's gonna hear about that when you gotta tuck that ball away and especially what you just saw on the other end going into the touch for a touchdown. Secure the football, hold on to it. As we're at the 230 mark here in the second quarter, this third second half of the third quarter. It's kind of been flying by and, and Hampton's been running the ball, I think, to probably take some of that clock. Yeah, the pass definitely switched up. They're they're game plan a little bit here in the second half. They're running up the ball a lot more down the middle, let eating up some clock and letting this game go away. We have an injured player on the field. And I can't get the number here of the injured player, so we will get a timeout. So the Hampton Pirates are faced with a decision here. It's fourth down. So we're going to take a break and come back with you. 37 to 28 is the score. Two minutes left here in the third quarter on ESPN+. Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South football. Just two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Pirates up 37 to 28 against the Lynchburg Dragons. Fourth and four on their opponents. 46 yard line. And the Pirates are not going to gamble here. Since they hold a nine point lead, so they're going to decide just to punt the ball here and trust their defense. Punting's up. And it's towards the sideline. And it's a good punt. Sails all the way to about the six-yard line. And they'll mark it at the seven. The seven-yard line of Lynchburg. So good punt there for the Pirates as they pin the Lynchburg offense deep into their own territory. Yeah, and this is going to be an important drive here with this field position. If you're happy, you definitely want to get a three and out and keep them down here and uh, get some good field position back for your offense. Yeah, this is a pretty big drive for Lynchburg for the reasons you just stated right there. We're getting pretty late in this game. And if you don't find a way to get a first down or a couple of first downs, you give the Pirates the ball with pretty good field position. If they score the ball again, you can pretty much just say this, this game is close to being over. So this is a pretty big drive here for Lynchburg and for the Pirates. Handoff goes to Newman. He gets stopped instantly at the line of scrimmage. A flag will be thrown. And that flag can be one of two things. It can either be a holding or a face mask. It looks like it might be a, something. It's going to be against Lynchburg. Holding. So this will be about half the distance to the goal with them being so pent, far, pent so far back. So, so should be inside their five here. And it actually looks like it's going against the defense. Oh. Illegal hands to the face on the defense. 15 yard penalty and automatic first down for Lynchburg. So again, the flags come back to haunt the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, they've really not done a good job of of, of being, playing sound football and not using the, and getting penalties to hurt themselves. Um, like I said, in the first half, they were at 67. They were at 67 yards and penalties. We look here in the second half, um, they're already at 82 yards and a big play over there by number 68. Devin Marcano. On the immediate Marcano gets to the backfield, gets to the tackle for about a loss, two yard loss. So it'll be second and 12 here. Steve's in the backfield. And he pitches it off to Newman. Newman breaks one tackle, has some green grass, makes a couple of moves. Goes towards the sideline, gets hit out of bounds. And yeah. that, and that, there is a difference with Darion Carr in the game where in the first half, he broke those, he got those corners, he took them to the house. There, Darion Carr was like a, a, a speed bullet where he just chased him down and made sure he didn't get that first down. About a good one or two more plays left here in this quarter. It's about under 30 seconds here to go. Steven gets the snap, looking down the field, goes for the throw to the sideline. Ball is bobbled and it's going to be called caught. A catch. That was number 28, Daquan Fleming, with the catch there. Another one of those running backs for the Lynchburg Dragons. And 
with under 15 seconds to go, it looks like Lynchburg is just going to take the quarter and go into the fourth quarter. Yeah, so headed to the fourth quarter, 37 to 28 is your score. And what was a shootout in the first half, we just get seven points here in the third quarter. Lone touchdown coming from the Pirates. So we'll be back here on ESPN coverage of the Big South with the fourth quarter action here at Armstrong Stadium. Back here on ESPN Plus coverage of Big South Football with your fourth quarter of action. 37 to 28 is the score. Pirates up by nine points, but the ball is possessed by University of Lynchburg. They go out with a screen, three head defenders there. But he bounces out both tackles and still got still moving. It works hard just to gain about three yards there. Uh, he he didn't want to go down and um Little shifty guy showed he had a little power in those legs and shrugging off those tackles. What looked like should have been a three or four yard loss turned into a three yard gain. It's a good effort there. Stevenson back in shotgun once again. Goes with a hard count. It looks to change up the here play. The, here with the formation into the boundary. I wouldn't be surprised if you see something going back to the field with the running back or exactly what they do. Hand off right down the middle. Gets some pretty good yardage. It looks like the ball comes out. And it's a big crowd over it. Hampton University says they have it. And in the middle of that scrum that, that knocked it loose, you see the man walking off. And Hampton through. University has the football. The Another turnover here in the fourth quarter. And that will be a pretty costly turnover for University of Lynchburg. Big hit there by Sproul who jarred the ball loose. Um, Hampton aware of it, gets falls on it, comes away with it. And again, that's Lynch, like you mentioned earlier, Lynchburg's running out of opportunities to try to even this game up. So that's turnover gives Hampton University the football at, the, at their opponent's 46 yard line. So pretty good field position. A couple of first downs can get them a field goal and put them up by two possessions. Two touchdown scores to be exact. Williams gets the snap, hands it off, and bottled up in the backfield is number 43, Rashad Harriet. I guess the defense has said the offense got all the shine in the first half. The defense is want to show up and make some plays here in the yeah, second half. Yeah. It's been a defensive yeah, battle. Yeah. Rashad Harriet's been getting a lot of handoffs in the last couple of drives. Williams goes down towards the middle. Gets Barney with the catch right towards the line of the game. And that was a scary hit, as you can see, Barney with a little limp as he goes out to the, to the uh, wide side of the field. And they try to go to use a hurry-up offense and go quick here to get the first down, but we get a flag on the field. And we also have a down player. It'll be false start against the offense. So... It'll be third and six instead of third and one. Players was not set. And we have an injured lineman down for University of Lynchburg. It looks like that could be uh, is it Heisman Johnson down. Uh, Look like he's cramping up a little bit as they, or maybe something with his knee as they move him around. Man, I got a proposal for you. If the Hampton University say they throw the ball, run the ball, or whatever it may be, and they get to a fourth and one, fourth and two, it's fourth quarter, you're up by nine points. Do you try to get that first down, get some points on the board, and put this game away? Do you I, punt the ball or force the offense? I think with the way the defense is playing, I think you go ahead and you you go ahead and if you can't get, the, if you don't feel comfortable, confident enough for the field goal, you go ahead and punt it and play the field with this game. The defense has been playing great in the second half, um, and you want to hope that they can keep that up. Because you're still up two scores. Um, so if, even if they score and get the two-point conversion, they're still up a point. So I think you want to be smart here and let your defense continue to uh, play well as they have been here in the second half. And the reason I ask you that is because 
Say they punt the ball, it becomes a, f a touchdown and a field goal. Or you say two-point conversion and field goal. And Lynchburg will take the lead. Whereas if Hampton just scores a field goal in here, they will force Lynchburg to have to score two touchdowns instead of a field goal and a touchdown. But William, nevertheless, passes the ball and gets the first down. So we don't even have to worry about exactly. that situation here if you're a Pirates fan. That was Alec Dana on the reception. First down for the Pirates. And now have the ball in their opponent starting nine. They'll still keep going with this hurry-up offense. Trying to keep the defense off balance. Handoff. Goes to Robinson. Trying to find a hole. Makes a cut. Makes a good move. Gets a couple extra yards on the run. Will Robinson on the carry. Gets about five yards. Good run there by Will Robinson. And the other thing that's great about it, he was smart enough to stay in bounds. That way you keep the clock running. Um, you don't give them an opportunity to uh, to get more time on the clock for you and come back attempt. So um, smart job of staying in bounds, keeping the clock running, knowing that time is in your favor, not theirs. Shotgun for Williams. Has Robinson on the side. Stead goes to the middle. And still on his feet. To the 10, to the 5. And he goes down with a big hit. But holds onto the football. Good catch and run there by Byron Barney on the reception. Been one of uh, Williams' favorite targets, especially in that middle here today. Yeah, he's really um, he's really been excelling in the passing game with making some plays out there. And uh, the ability to keep his focus in that was really good as Robinson Gold punches in for another score. Touchdown for the Pirates extends the lead to 43 to 28 with 11:51 remaining here in the fourth quarter. So at this point, you can uh, kind of say that this game is getting close to over here. Hampton with a good drive there. Now this next drive is what's going to be vital for the Pirates as they look to, um, as Lynchburg is going to look to get a quick score. Set for the field goal attempt. Field goal is up and good. 44-28 is the score. Pirates now up big against the University of Lynchburg. We'll be right back with ESPN coverage of Big South Football. Back here on ESPN Plus with your coverage of Big South Football football as we talk about the big stuff we had a couple of games on earlier today in the conference and uh, right now at the start of the fourth quarter we have Monmouth up on Presbyterian 10-7 uh, with Monmouth with the ball third and three and then we have Gardner Webb up early in the second quarter 13-0 over Campbell with a later kickoff with Kennesaw State and Charleston Southern a 6 p.m. kickoff on ESPN plus Kennesaw State the second rank team in the nation Pooch kick goes out of bounds for the Pirates, so Lynchburg will start that drive off on the 35. Hampton University gets back to action next week against SUNY Marine Time out of New York. Football squad came off a victory today against Anna Mar uh, Maria, 14-7. That game will be played in New York on the ESPN+. Plus. It would go set first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Uh, big drive here for Lynchburg. Shotgun formation. Stevenson trying to escape the pocket. It gets sacked and the flag is in the backfield in the, in the region of a hold, and it will be holding against Lynchburg. So now that you know Lynchburg pretty much has to throw the ball now, they found the majority of the success in this game running the ball, but now they're going to be forced to throw the ball because of the time issues. So the Pirates looking to bring a little bit of pressure and not let Stevenson get too comfortable in that pocket. Yeah, they're going to really pin their ears back here and, and try to get out there, which is what puts the offensive lineman in positions where when you get beat, um, you want to grab and hold to keep from your quarterback taking any big shots. Option play. Stevenson keeps it, but he is corralled quickly. Game just goes for about three yards. It'd be second and about 17. The Pirates did a good job of shutting it off. It looked like it was going to break for a big run, um, and they were able to contain it um, and let the inside pursuit run it down and, and get them down on the ground. Second. 
Handoff goes to the running back, but he gets bottled up quickly at the 30-yard line. So two unlikely play calls here from Lynchburg, who just decided to go with two handoffs instead of throwing the ball here. So now they're running the clock out a little bit on their on themselves. Now that 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 holding penalty penalty really put them in a position they don't want to be in, where you're behind the sticks and you kind of you're already in a throwing mode anyway. And now this is forcing you to to have to really push the ball down the field, so routes take longer to develop, which means you put it's less to do. So now they're trying to run to get some of that yard back. Third and about 14. Hampton University playing the sticks. Most of the D-backs holding the line of scrimmage. Ball goes underneath. Three passes there. Well short of the first down. It'll be about fourth and 11. And the punting unit is coming out for University of Lynchburg. And that was a good series there for the Pirates defense to get off the field, get the three and out, get off the field. And now you get your ball back to get the ball back to your offense. We get right under 10 minutes. And you're going to see that Pirate offense really slow the game down take their time, make sure they're in the right calls, and grind the clock out here to try to uh, go ahead and steal this victory. Punt is off. Short punt. Goes to about the 34-yard line. Fair caught. And the Pirates will come back on the field. And you can expect the Pirates to try to run the ball out here. And one of the big things looking at this game, looking at the stats here, um, the Hampton has done a good job here, especially in the second half you've seen of possessing the football. As you look at Hampton has run 74 plays for 538 yards to Lynchburg's 46 for 344. And I mean, a lot of that has to do with the good play of Williams today. Has over 300 yards passing on the day, one of his better games of the season. Yeah, and you really think about it, other than the two interceptions, um, he's been efficient. He's 23 of 29. Um, so he's been making good choice plays with the football. Um, just a couple of uh, errant throws of poor decisions. Um, yeah, four throws. Yeah. So he's he's been playing a good game, and the Pirates have done some good things. Uh, but I, I think you have to give some credit to Lynchburg, too, for uh, taking advantage of him when he has made those mistakes. Yeah, this was a game who we thought was over pretty early when half the university held a 20 uh, nothing lead. The University of Lynchburg had turned this game around, around really quickly here in the second quarter and came back and made it a two-point game when it was 30-28. to 28. But since then, University of Lynchburg hasn't found a way to get back on the uh, scoring board. Handoff goes to Robinson. He gets a uh, nice little gap to run with, and he gets the first down. Will It'll be first down on their opponent's 49-yard line for the Hampton Pirates. And the same thing here you see, again, the Pirates really not in a rush. They're at the line. Early on, you saw them going with that quick pace offense. Hit her at the line. The offensive linemen not even in their stance. Center hasn't touched the ball. Play clock's down to 20. They're really going to work this clock and put some pressure on, on Lynchburg if when they get back on the field, they have to try to push the ball down the field. But again, it's still only a two-score game as it's a 16-point lead. So yeah, here in the second half, this offensive, offensive line has pretty much dominated this game. The running backs had a lot of uh, green space to work with here. So if I'm the Pirates and I know they can't stop the run, why not just keep handing it off as they're doing now? Robinson gets the ball for another good three to four yards here. And when you talk to offensive linemen, I know some of the guys I played with, they look forward to the running game because then they got to really just what they would say maul the, the defensive linemen. They're not sitting there on their heels. They actually get to go out and attack and be aggressive. And create lanes. Yeah, so they look forward to it. And did not want to say the least the second half, this Hampton Pirates offensive line has really, really shown their force and dominated the line of scrimmage. And there's really been the difference in the half. In the first half, um, you had Delma Williams sacked five times. Um, I don't think so far here he's been he's been touched in the backfield on any pass plays. Handoff goes to Robson again. He squeezes between the holes, still on his feet. And nearly gets the first down. It'll be third and one here for Will Robinson. They're actually going with the hurry-up offense here for the first time just to make sure they get the first down. Go with the hurry-up offense. Hands it off to Robinson. He has a big hole. Gets the first down and more. Gets all the way down to their opponent's 28-yard line. 
And now I think you're going to see them go back to that, slow it down, as they've gotten the clock under six, under seven minutes here, um, as we call this the what we call it the four minute offense. Offenses teams practice this. You have your two minute drills where you're trying to you're trying to get points as quickly as possible. Then you have your four minute offenses where you really want to just take your time, get first down. You don't even want big plays really. You want just enough to get first downs, first downs, first downs, and really milk that clock. Here he checks in the game as Will Robson come out. Robinson having a pretty good day here. As Williams pulls it back out, he's going to keep it and actually toss it flags on the field. And he goes for about six yards. But we're definitely going to check the flag on the field. And it looked like it'd be in the area of a hold. Because as I was saying, Will Robinson's had an awesome day today. 21 attempts on 171 yards gain. That's around eight yards per carry today. And yes, he only has one touchdown, but... That, that, that's that's not to say the say the least about him. Most of the past touchdowns have came from outside the 10-yard line today. So yeah. when he have gotten to, into the red zone in goal situations, his one touchdown came right down the middle, forcing this way in. So pretty good game here today for Will Robinson. Yeah, a lot of and, – and the reason why he didn't get the run in, I think, for most of them or any uh, more touchdowns because Delvin Williams was able to pull the ball down several times and, and rush it in as well. That's absolutely true. Uh, Williams actually has two touchdowns on the game on the ground. So both running good running by Williams and Robinson. Hands off both to Harriet. Harriet, who's gotten the game here in the second half, has had a pretty a pretty couple good decent runs. And that just shows you this offensive line is creating lanes for every player there in the backfield. Yeah, he's been he's been really effective spelling Robinson and keeping the running run. game Jackson, keeping the running game going. As, Excuse me. He has four car carries for 13 yards, but those 13 yards have been important, um, and that's not including the run we just saw there. Yeah, he's giving Will Robinson the chance, which you see right now, to actually catch that breather. And when Harriet comes in the game, it's not like a lack of of, of, of talent. It's just another talented uh, talented player there in the backfield running the ball. Handoff goes to Harriet again. He gains another good five yards and gets back to the. Original line of scrimmage, it'll be about third and ten. And here's a really good drive right now for the Pirates when you look at it. It's, this drive started at the 944 mark in the fourth quarter. Right now it's 445 and counting, 447 and counting. And they only got the ball at what the 28 yard line. But this is what you want in this situation. You really want to milk the clock, grind it out. Uh, Lynchburg is, is dialing up some things to try to get some pressure and try to make some play. You see a lot of raking at the football to try to get it out. Um, but the Pirates doing a good job of protecting the football and giving themselves an opportunity. Shotgun formation for Williams. He's looking to throw the ball, see if they can get the first down here. Here's a man wide open in the end zone. Thrown, caught, touchdown. That was number 88, Marcel Pohl with the catch. He's had himself also a great day today. And the Pirates at this, time, at this point are just stacking it on. Now up 50 to 28 with four minutes remaining here in the game. Well, I think in the first half, we talked about a tale of two quarters. Here in the second half, we're talking about a tale of two halves, I guess. <laughs> because in that, that, or a tale of quarters, because that, that second quarter was the big quarter that really gave Lynchburg life. But since then, they've been shut out by this pirate defense. And partly, part of that, too, is this pirate offense that they've been able to grind out the clock and control the game. It's the second touchdown of the day here for. Paul, we'll go to a break here. 51 to 28 is the score. 419 remaining here. We'll be back on ESPN Plus. Start with Lowe's for dedicated services and associates to get you in, out, and back to business. Save 5% every day. Back here on ESPN Plus. Four minutes just remaining here in this game. And what's been a very eventful, wild, all-around, exciting game for both sides. This game was most of a roller coaster for the first half. Second half has been lopsided. We can say it's been a roller coaster for about one quarter in this game. The other quarter has <laughs> been pretty, pretty much lopsided. Boosh kick from the Pirates nearly goes out of bounds, but stays in bounds, luckily. Lynchburg is going to take over here. And, and again, um, Lynchburg down by a big deficit, 23 points. Uh, 
probably if they want to try to make a comeback, you're definitely going to put it in the air. So you should see this pirate defense really look to get after this passer. In the Third place. As Hampton has subbed out a lot of their starters now, as you see, they've, they've put in some of the backups. As Hampton's already feeling like this game is over, uh, which is smart. You don't want to risk injuries to guys, but also get some other guys out there to to get some reps. Play, say they played in the homecoming um, and start getting ready for next season. And backup quarterback in the game here for University of Lynchburg. He keeps the ball. He gets hit in the backfield. But finds a way to get a yard there. Second and nine coming up. That's Isaiah McNair, who's checked into the game at quarterback for University of Lynchburg. And actually, now they're going to come back in. So I'm going to correct myself. I think they believe that was a wildcat because McNair is obviously a wide receiver. Okay. I think that, yeah, I think that was a wildcat set for Lynchburg right there. And Steve Smith back in at quarterback. Stevenson back in the backfield, gets the snap, hands it off. If he's looking for some room, but gets hit in the backfield and goes down in the backfield, that was number four, Muhammad Kila on the run. Lynchburg is, if you really look at it, they look like they might have reserved themselves to saying, hey, this game's over. Let's go ahead and just get out of this game without any injuries. Yeah, absolutely game like this is about a 20 point deficit you don't want to force players and players end up getting injured play safe you can kind of try some new calls try some new plays but nothing too serious and just get ready for the next game next week handoff goes down the middle for a nice gain and a first down for university of lynchburg handoff went to Newman on the carry. Newman. Newman had a great first half, been pretty much quiet here in the second half. That's first uh, but half I think he right. proved some stuff to himself as coaches. He he had, a, like you said, he had a really good first half and a really great second quarter. Uh, well, end of the first quarter, he got the, the first one was that big long run to uh, get the first points on the board and make it 20 to 7. He had 250 plus yarders here, well, 250 plus yarders in one quarter. Screenplay goes to Newman, but he drops it. And that's what you see at the times where Newman has actually made some mistakes here on, on the receiving end as a running back. Yeah. He's dropped a couple of screen passes here today. Right. And on, I'm going to say on tap um, next for University of Lynchburg, they have a little break between their next game. But on November 17th, they'll play their last game of the season versus Delaware State um, at Delaware State. For you, uh, for the Dragon fans out there that may want to go check them out, 11, November 17th. Shotgun. Feel like a double reverse handoff, but Hampton all over. Same play they ran earlier here in this game. This time didn't get the Pirates. And looking at it, it looked like it was going to be a double reverse pass. As you see, the offensive line is still, we're still at the line of scrimmage. And that was a receiver running deep. And you see what happens when you try to force plays and the player goes down. So, so the injury's not too bad. We're going to take a break right here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll be right back. Roadside attractions, and then there's our world famous on road attraction, the 2019 GLC Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. Okay, Kevin, USAA Bank is here to help you stay on track. Budget's looking good. Fair for a fill up, and green lots of beef jerky, too. Thanks, Chief. USAA Bank helps you stay a step ahead. Find help at every turn yeah! with USAA Bank. <laughs> One cup of lemonade. 
Time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday Ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to DirecTV. More for your thing. That's our thing. And here's Marty. Your million-dollar moment awaits. Visit EckridgeFootball.com to find out more. Blue Moon is a Belgian-style wheat beer, brewed with Valencia orange peel for a flavorful and refreshing taste that rises above. The Audi 2018 MLS Cup Playoffs, Thursday on ESPN2. Back here on ESPN Plus with your last two minutes of coverage here. 51 to 28 is the score. Hampton University leading big over the University of Lynchburg, Virginia. Stevenson gets the ball and shotgun hands it off. Big hole there for the runner. And he gets the first down. And that's what you didn't want to have happen. Hampton set up their defense to stop them at the at the yard mark, but you gotta wrap up and make tackles and get downhill once you see that ball is handed off. Back and shotgun again is University of Lynchburg. This time they go for a screenplay. And it's read by the Pirates. And it'll be a loss of about three yards here for University of Lynchburg. At this point in time, everybody's thinking just, hey, let's just go ahead and line up, shake hands, and get up out of here because 23-point uh, <laughs> game, nobody's to come back in this amount of time will take a miracle for both sides. Hand off. Again, a nice push there by the defensive line of the Pirates. And bottled up at the, as the backfield is Keller. Muhammad Keller. But this is always interesting this time of the game when fans watch the game and you be like, they kind of you ask questions, why didn't you play like this in the beginning? Uh, but the other team is kind of playing. They're not playing with that same energy that they played to start the game with because they're looking at the scoreboard. And they don't have. They know they can't win, so it, they kind of lose that momentum and that energy. Uh, it looked like University of Lynchburg is going to slow down the game with their snaps as well. Hopefully, no players get injured. And a nice run for uh, Killer. He gets about five yards on the carry. It looks like that's going to be the last and play of the game. And that should do it for the game. And it's looking like University of Lynchburg is going to run no more snaps. So that would do it for today's game. Homecoming here for the Hampton University. 51-28 to 28 is your final score. The Pirates went up 20. But University of Lynchburg came back storming with a 28. Surge, 30-28 was your score for a good few minutes. But Hampton Pirates jumped back on top. And here in the second half, took total control. Final score once again, 51-28. That's it for the coverage of ESPN Plus Big South. Again, Hampton University will be playing in New York. Coverage will be here on ESPN Plus. Be back with you.